church, under the church, or out of the church. We are called by God in Christ to contend with this oppressive spirit. We have the power of the Holy Spirit to contend with this dominating, destructive spirit. We have the obligation to engage the spirit of domination and control. We got the power. Do y'all believe that or not? Amen. Amen. We, we got it. Remember this morning I talked about the importance of prayer? Getting in the word till the word gets in you. Paying attention to that voice, that still small voice that speaks through the anger and the anguish and the frustration and the despair and even the fear and following obediently that internal, that inner voice. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, uh, where I'm from, they call the inner voice something. Something told me. And if you check in with people, they'll tell you that every time they do what something says, it works out. I come to know that, the, that, that which we call something is the Holy Spirit. It's just that simple. Just learn how to walk in obedience to something. <laughs> both, both Walter Brueggemann and Thomas Stroger have written extensively about this whole notion of imagination for preachers. There's something called, we black preachers used to use this phrase all the time, with my sanctified imagination I can see. And, 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 and many of us have been preaching long enough to know the power of a sanctified imagination because with a sanctified, you can close, well, this is how it works for me. I can close my eyes and I can kind of see it unfold and I tell the story of what I see. Sanctified imagination. What, 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 what both Brueggemann and prophetic imagination and Troger in um, reimagining the text, what, what, what they are talking about, y'all, is imagining an alternate reality for the people that God has called and sent us to serve. So if our primary reality is poverty and oppression as African people in North America, and it is, enslavement, all other kinds of exploitation seem to come our way, then can we, the, 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 the women and men of God, envision another reality? Moses saw people whose experience was enslavement. He envisioned the reality of a promised land flowing with milk and honey. And he began to work in the direction of that vision, even when it seemed that that vision had no hope. He was kicked out of Pharaoh's palace. He surged in the wilderness along with Jephthah and them for, what, 40 years? Then he was sent back. Pharaoh said, no, get out of here. We ain't letting nothing go, All right? Went through a series of 10 plagues. He kept on pushing this vision that he had imagined of a promised land flowing with milk and honey. What is it that we envision for our people? What do we imagine? What is the alternate reality that we imagine? And another thing about Moses, another thing about us, this imagination has to line up with the revealed will of God. I believe that God wants all of God's people free, regardless of color, regardless of culture, you know, regardless, of, regardless of religious identity. God wants us all free. But God calls and sends women and men to cast an alternate vision. To, to talk about a new kind of random reality. What is that? My ministry has been principally about liberation. I, I'm, I talk about African-centered Christian ministry. You know, that's my, kind of my shtick. For the last 20-something years, that's what I've been doing. Before that, I was trying to figure it out. I've been in ministry for 33 years, and then I got it. And so ever since then, I've been kicked out of churches. I've had congregations. Most of the people get up and walk out on me. I've had that happen. Hey, man, when I started my church, the denomination said, no, they cut off all the resources after nine months. Hey, man, I said, we will live and not die because God has given us a vision. Hey, Amen. 
And we're doing all right. Amen. Without denominational support. I didn't leave the denomination. I just said, well, the Lord has sent another folk that don't look like you for us to do what God has called us to do. Praise the Lord. And we, we, we go on with it. Amen. I grew locks and people quit talking to me. I wear African clothes and they say he lost his mind. Amen. But, but then the Lord helped me to see how I was in good company. How the prophets and Jesus himself were rejected by these institutions and organizations that had it in their mind that their purpose was to oppress other people. I ain't, I ain't trying to brag. I'm just trying to tell you because it's been a hard journey and it's still a hard journey. Lord Jesus have mercy. It has been bitter. It's been lonely. Amen. It has been all of that. But it's also been blessed and joyful. It's something when you know that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Still of what somebody told you you were supposed to be doing. Yes, Amen. Yes, I had a question. Uh, Dr. Amen. Lomax, how long does the kicking out last? Doc, Before the transformation. So, long, so far, 17 years. It, yeah. it, it, it's an ongoing reality. Yeah. See, 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 this is the road less traveled. Some people are. Yeah, but they're out. They, 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 it, it, it assumes that there are no cliques, there are no classes within the system. There are systems within the systems. And everybody and the, that's the other, in the, the system. The other phenomenon is this. Is this there, is an important point. Is, is there a, a, an extension of the crucifixion <laughs> yeah. within the context yeah. of the experience in. Well, well, yeah, yeah. Extension of the crucifixion. Within, extension. Within the context of what? An experience in the black church, uh, the ecclesiastical cru crucifixion. You know what? It's going to cost us something to serve. Mm -hmm. And it's painful to serve, yes, is the answer to the question. There's a sense in which what I've been talking about and what we've been called to can't be anything other than a painful journey. And in many respects, a journey of deprivation. It's a journey on which we won't have many friends, typically. But God didn't call us to be friends. God called us to be witnesses. And, and, and this is what Aubrey Hendricks in his book, The Politics of Jesus, talks about. He, he, says, he says that the prophets were faithful to Judaism. They were faithful to Jerusalem. They were even faithful to the temple, but they challenged all three of those things in the interest of Yahweh. They were in, like you were saying, but they were out. That's what you're talking about. Yeah. Could you give us an example of how you would preach that text? <laughs> He's trying to go me into a sermon. Uh... I don't know. I, I, you know, if, 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 if I were going to preach that text, I, I probably would use uh, something like, uh, what'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> going to hell with a smile. <laughs> Catching hell with a smile. I don't know. I, I, I would probably, some, you know, knowing me, I would, talk, I would probably tell, say something like, the slave master is not God. Because that's what our people, I think that's what our, where our people are. We, 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 we really do believe. I, I tend not to preach sermons that, that, that make people comfortable. In fact, I know that they're not going to shout. Right. Amen. I, I can stand on my head and they ain't going to shout. Because I'm going to tell them the slave master is not God. And first, what I would want to do, Brother Price, is, is I, want to, I want people to understand who the slave master is. Much as I've, as I've done today, that the slave master really is not just a person, but the slave master is a system or a conglomeration of systems that make sure that they keep us under control. Collectively, they, they coordinate their activities to keep us in a certain form of bondage where to think our own thoughts puts us in jeopardy. To organize in our own communities makes us radical 
And if you keep doing it too much, even ridiculous. Did it ever occur to you that each... Okay. Okay, I'm going to do it. It, 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 That that, that, that to organize in our collective visions, if you recognize... if if What happens in this text is that the person who speaks up gets denigrated. You worker of iniquity. Every time a woman or a man has stood up to speak for oppressed peoples, the first thing they do is attack them. The very first thing is to denigrate them. Even in our churches, in our denominations, when you stand up to speak to power, the first thing, he don't know what he's doing. Look at him. He's such, he's so dumb. She's so crazy. She's crazy. And many times, the crazy person in your community is the truth teller. You better stand up and recognize so I would want to get on people's, I would want to see that's a familiar place. I would probably stay right there in the sermon. I talk about the crazy people I've encountered. Amen. And after, when I'm done, I'm going to help everybody to see there's some crazy in all of us. There's something in every one of us that wants to be free. All right. So I want to tell that story. I want to tell the story in relation to our collective and lived experience relating it to the text, right? And I, I don't know if I could holler on this one because don't nobody holler about getting kicked out. <laughs> Amen. Let's get kicked out means being pulled in. Because in this man's case, to be kick, being kicked out of the system means being in the reindom of God. Amen. Um, are there any more questions? that you might have a comments. Based upon the uh, revelations that you've just shared with us, it appears to me that we're gonna have a lot of work cut out for us going back to our congregations. How then could you take the former and make it positive, or is there a positive in the former application of the scripture with this dichotomy that you shared with us today? Well, the, the, the way to make it positive is to recognize that we are the ones who've already been kicked out. I mean, did I lie? We already kicked out. This is why this is a dissentering word. Me and you are not in the main street. I mean, does anybody ever call you all these polls they do? You ever got called, brother? They ain't, they're not trying to listen to you. All these polls, every day there's a different poll. Nobody has ever called my house saying, Dr. Lomax, what do you think? <laughs> we already kicked out. Where's the African advisory group to President Obama? Which congressperson holds audience comes to your community to listen to what you have to say? You're already kicked out. We still earn, what is this, um, $16? To every hundred dollars that white folk earn in this country, sixty-six dollars to every hundred dollars that they earn, you ain't in, you out. Shoot, what you talking about finding your place? There it is. <laughs> the question is, what do we do with our place? How do we manage being kicked out on the fringes, when every statistic points in the direction of the African community? What do we do with that reality? Yes, sir. 